What's up guys, my name's Brandon and this past week was jam packed with new software updates just as we expected. So on Tuesday, we got iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 5 and tvOS 15 beta 5. And then on the following day, we got the public betas for those versions along with macOS Big Sur 11.5.2, which was released to the public and just included some minor bug fixes. And then later on Wednesday, Apple released watchOS 8 beta 5 and macOS Monterey beta 5 with the public beta versions releasing the next day on Thursday. So a really strange release schedule this week and we really only got one public release which is for macOS Big Sur 11.5.2 so pretty strange but of course it did make things a bit interesting and kept us on our toes which is always fun and just typical Apple nowadays. But anyways in this video we're going to be discussing iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 5 and some additional new features and changes found along with how it's been performing in terms of battery life, connectivity, and just overall performance. So let's start off by going over some of these additional new features and changes. So the first one has to do with background sound. So if we go into our settings and then go to accessibility, and then let's go down to audio visual and then to background sounds, you can see that we have a new toggle at the bottom here in beta five. We did not have this in beta four. So just for reference, I will have beta four pulled up over here on the left. So if I go to the same section, you can see that on beta four, we did not have this toggle right down here at the bottom. So it says stop sounds when locked. When enabled, background sounds will stop when iPhone is locked. So very self-explanatory. So this is a nice feature if you use background sounds, although I'll probably leave this off just because I usually have my phone locked when I'm sleeping, so I don't want the sounds to stop. But that is a new toggle in there if you use it for another reason. We also have a minor change to the focus mode notifications here in the notification center in beta five. So before it would show like all of the apps right here as the little glyph icon to the left of the notifications. But now in beta five, it actually shows the work focus or whatever focus you're using. It shows the glyph icon for that specific focus over here next to the notification. Also in beta five, we get some additional quick settings for voiceover. So if we go to our settings and then go down to accessibility and then to voiceover and then down to quick settings, you can see that we have quite a few more quick settings here in beta five than we had in beta four, which is excellent for those who use voiceover. We also have a minor change when we haptic press on an alarm. So if you have an alarm currently going off and you haptic press on that, you can see that for snooze and stop, oops, I just went away from it. All right, so here we go. Now you can see in beta five, we have glyph icons next to snooze and stop. So in previous betas, it just simply said snooze and stop. It was just two buttons with no icons, but now we have those glyph icons, the Z's and the little stop button right there just for some visual improvements inside of the shortcuts application we have a ton of new glyph icons that you can add for your icons in shortcuts so you're gonna have to look through these there are quite a few new ones here in beta 5 so basically if you just have a shortcut and you want to edit the icon just tap on it up there in the top left and this is where you can change the color and the glyph and there are new glyphs here in beta 5. Another feature in beta 5 that I covered in my initial what's new video is that you can see it shows now when you go to power off your device it says iPhone findable after power off whereas in beta 4 there was no verbiage there until you just turned off your phone then it showed it at the bottom. Well there's actually something small that I missed here in beta 5 as well. So this text is actually clickable. So if you go and tap on that, you could see you get this little menu right here that says iPhone remains findable after power off. And then you actually get the option to temporarily turn off finding. So that is a new feature here in beta five. And if we tap on that, you can see that you have to put in your passcode before you can turn that off. So this is great if somebody's trying to steal your phone and turn it off and think that it's you know untraceable. We also have some changes inside of the maps application. So you can see the satellite icon has changed. So look up there in the top right above the arrow, you can see that that glyph icon has been updated here in beta five. And speaking of the maps application, in my initial what's new video, I mentioned how the maps application was now displaying the length of time in traffic like Waze does. And I asked you guys in that video if that's new and if you're seeing that. And thank you to everybody who responded to that because I actually got some Instagram DMs, some comments on Twitter, everybody notifying me that yes, Apple does in fact 
you know, reroutes you if traffic is bad. It shows your time and traffic. And if Apple finds a better route, it will automatically reroute you like Waze does. Also, I did want to mention that visual lookup is working again here in beta five. So in beta four and beta three, actually, visual lookup was just simply not working for me on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. It was working on my 12 Pro, but it was not working on my 12 Pro Max. But thankfully, I can say that in beta five, it is back to working properly. So you can see when I swipe up, we have these new little sections down here. So it shows, of course, saved from Snapchat. And there's a little section here that says look up cat. And you can either tap on this right here to see the visual lookup, or you could tap right here. And it thinks my cat is a Bengal, which it's not, but it does have the stripes like it. So some changes there to visual lookup. And thankfully, again, it is working for me. So if it wasn't working for you, it may be working now here in beta five. And then on the same topic, we do also have a new live text toggle inside of the language and region section. So if we go to our settings and then to general and then down to language, and region right here you can see that we have live text right here as a toggle a kill switch to turn that on and off for your photos so just another way to do that and then lastly we also have a new feature with the magsafe battery pack here in beta 5. so if we have the magsafe attached to the back and we go to our control center and we go in haptic press on low power mode the toggle here in control center we have a new option here for charge past 90 percent so that is not there if you don't have this battery pack attached, of course. So if we go to that and then haptic press, you can see it just shows low power mode. And by the way, I don't think you could actually haptic press on that in previous versions. So let me go and check here on beta four just to confirm that. Yeah, so you could not haptic press on that at all actually in beta four. So not only can you haptic press on that, but you also get the additional option there if you do have the MagSafe battery pack. Now, as far as bug fixes go, we do also have a bug fix for the medium sized music widget so you guys know in previous betas i pointed out how the small widget right here actually shows more of the song than the medium sized widget but that's actually been fixed here in beta 5. so this is an issue from betas 1 through 4 but now it actually shows the full song and everything so let me try to find something with a long title so this is pretty long right here so if we go back you can see that it actually shows more text now on this than it did before so let me see if i can show you guys an example over here so you can see here's what it looked like in beta 4 and i knew this was a bug in previous versions that's why i mentioned it and you can see here in beta 5 we now have more text from the song and it fills up more real estate in this widget as it should and then another bug fix we have related to music is that the bug that i talked about in previous betas where the now playing would not show up on the lock screen or in the control center or on my head unit that has been fixed here in beta 5. i've not had that happen one time to me since installing this whereas it would happen frequently on betas 3 and 4. so thankfully that appears to be fixed fully here in beta 5 and also the visual lookup like i mentioned earlier is fully fixed here and seems to be working fine on my 12 pro max so great bug fixes in this update even though apple didn't really mention too much in the release notes now as far as remaining bugs go we do still have a few bugs here in beta 5 it's not perfect we are still in the beta stages it's a lot less buggy i will say than beta 4 overall a lot less bugs but we do have some and one is that somebody mentioned this on twitter they mentioned me on twitter in a dm that when they tried to change their icloud profile picture it crashed their settings multiple times so it appears that is a new bug here in beta 5 when you try to change your iCloud profile picture so luckily not anything you guys are going to be doing frequently so that should be fixed in beta 6 but I did just want to point that out also Twitter crashing is still going on so I am still having Twitter crashes from time to time although it does seem a little bit less frequent now in beta 5 it could just be because of the update in the app store to Twitter I'm not sure but I will keep monitoring Twitter for crashes because again one time in beta 4 it actually made my device completely respring and then as far as banking applications go banking apps are still not working properly for me or for many others especially when it comes to logging in via face ID it just simply doesn't work on these iOS 15 betas which is unfortunate and again those may not be fixed until the final release of iOS 15 because that's when the banks will actually update their applications to be fully supported with 15. And you guys have also had some additional bugs here on beta five that I have not had, but I will talk about those in the community poll section of this video, which we'll talk about here in a moment after we talk about the performance and the battery life. So as far as the performance goes here in beta five, it's actually been excellent so far. So I called this in my what's new video along with the battery life, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But the performance is great. I don't have near as many crashes as I had 
in beta 4. Apps are just performing great. Safari is a lot better. FaceTime is a lot better. Just overall performance seems better in beta 4. The Geekbench scores support that theory. And a lot of you guys also have reported that it's just a better experience overall here in beta 5. Now, where the real you know improvements come here in beta 5 seem to be with battery life because battery life is actually significantly better here in beta 5 compared to beta 4, according to myself and a lot of you guys. So I would say most of you guys have had a better experience with the battery life here in beta 5. So let me go ahead and pull over my iPhone 12 Pro to show you guys the battery life I'm getting. So we go to my settings here. Let me get this out of dark mode just for the video. Let's go to battery. And you can see here that I'm actually getting solid battery life. So it's hard to tell always from these graphs, but I have been using my phone quite a bit recently. So you can see kind of my stats there, but battery life is performing a lot better. You can see here, I charged my phone until like 11 and used it pretty much all day and didn't charge it again until like five o'clock which is good when I'm using my phone that much. I was not getting you know, near that good of battery life on beta four. So I'm getting about an hour more of screen on and screen off combined at time here on the fifth beta compared to the fourth beta. So battery life, definitely an improvement here in this fifth beta. But as far as connectivity goes, some people are reporting new connectivity issues here in beta five. So I have not experienced this, but some people are having issues with Bluetooth connectivity and also cell connectivity. But I feel like that is something that everybody mentions or some people mention in every beta. So not too sure about that, but I have not been impacted by any type of connectivity issues. But if you have, let me know in a comment down below and we'll talk about more of that in the community poll. So let's go and actually look at that community poll now. So if we go to my YouTube channel here, let's see if it pops up first right here. So there it is. You can see here, this is the poll. How has iOS 15 beta five been running for you so far? And you can see we have over 8,400 votes. So thank you to everybody who voted in that. And for me, it's borderline excellent, but I'm still going to say good because there are still a few minor bugs, especially with the banking apps and Twitter and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and vote for good. So you can see that is actually the second highest. So wow, excellent is higher than good this time. So you can see here that 23% of people said that beta five is excellent with no major bugs and good battery life. 19% said good, just a few minor bugs. 5% said not so good and 52% are on 14.7.1 or lower. So wow, that is an impressive result there for beta five getting 23% on excellent. So if we go ahead and compare that actually to previous ones, I'll show you guys. So 16% was on the last beta. So that is a massive jump when we're talking about thousands of votes. Going from 16% to 23% is huge. So that alone should tell you that everybody's having a much better experience here. As you can see, it was 16% on beta three as well. And let's see if what it was on beta two. So 17%. So it hovered around 16 to 17%. But this time around, of course, we don't have as many votes yet, but it's hovering around, you know, 20 to possibly 25%. So a huge improvement there and just voting for excellence. So let's go ahead and see what you guys had to say here in these comments. So battery life is good and the IT is a bit buggy, but it's okay for an early beta. I'm not sure what the IT is there, but uh, you can see your battery life is surprisingly great on my iPhone 7. All major bugs have been ironed out. I might actually consider installing it on my main device. So that is always good to hear. And if you guys ask me, I think it's fine to run on your daily device now. So after this fifth beta, I am convinced that you guys can run this on your main device as long as you don't mind using Safari for your banking, you know, logins and things like that because the app won't work as well, at least not for most banks. So iPhone 10 R battery life is really good. I'm a heavy user and it lasts quite a while. Good to hear. So a lot of mentions of battery life here. You can see almost, you know, everybody mentions battery life improving, which is great. So it looks like beta five fixed the guided access bug. And the only problem he's having is with Bitwarden, which is his password manager. It's unusable in beta five. The most important thing is that the issue which was in the banking app was fixed. So it looks like some people are actually having a fix for their banking app. So that's good to hear. So let's go ahead and see what some of you guys also had to say. This update fixes all my issues on beta three and four, and it's very smooth. The only issue I have are display bugs, such as AirPods menu having a large gap. So I'm, I'm not sure about that. I've connected my AirPods pretty much every day and I've not noticed any type of issue there. Christina here says, I've had it for nearly a week and still can't get used to the new Safari. I hate it so much. So I hated it too my first couple of weeks, but I grew to love it after like a month or two of using it. So. 
having small issues with camera focusing. Funnily enough, if I take the picture anyway, the picture looks fine. That is very strange. I've not had that. If you can get a video of that or something, I would like to see that because that's pretty strange. I've not had that happen to me before. Battery life great on the 12 mini, pretty good on my iPod. Interesting, so we got an iPod user here. Good battery life speed and stability for a used year and a half old iPod Touch. Nice, it's always good to hear from iPod Touch users. They're pretty rare nowadays, at least for you know commenting on my videos and in these polls. I have a bug in the wallpaper section where when I tap on preview and then go back to the home screen, all my widgets disappear then reappear. So I've not had that. That's a pretty interesting bug there. Now I've also seen a few people say that their service just turned off by itself. And that's the second one I've seen in here. So people are having issues with connectivity, like I said. So hopefully those do get resolved. And you can see here somebody's talking about their battery health dropping. That has nothing to do with the software version. But anyways, thank you to everybody who commented on this poll. I read every single one of your guys' comments, including all the replies here when I asked about the battery life. So thank you to everybody who voted and also who left a comment. It helps everybody understand how these versions are running for the entire community and not just me. All right, so now let's talk about what is next for Apple. So we're coming up on the week of August 16th. So iOS 15 beta 6 is possible to come out next week. So either on the 17th or the 18th would be my guess. So on a Tuesday or Wednesday. And that is only if Apple is switching over to a one week beta cycle. So of course we just got iOS 15 beta 5 on Tuesday the 10th. So if it's going to be exactly a week, we would get iOS 15 beta 6 on the 17th right there. But of course, Apple can release this whenever they want. They're very unpredictable. And we still don't know if we're switching over to a one week beta cycle or not, because it's been every two weeks up until now. So now is when, like I said, we, Apple usually likes to switch over to a weekly release schedule. So we'll have to wait and see if that happens. Now also next week, we could possibly be seeing an iOS 14.8 beta one. So I'm honestly surprised that this has not been here yet. I was probably the first person, if not one of the first people to mention the possibility of a 14.8 coming. And I think we could possibly see it this coming week. So there was code and Xcode that mentioned 14.8. So it looks like it is, you know, an actual thing. So we could possibly be seeing beta one next week as well. But of course, time will tell on that. And then as far as iOS 15 final, we should be seeing that sometime in mid to late September. That of course depends on when Apple releases the new iPhones and when they hold their keynote. So we'll have to wait and see on that, but I would expect it sometime from the 13th, possibly all the way until the last week of September at the very latest. I don't think Apple's gonna wait till the end. I think it's going to be either the week of the 13th or the 20th, but it is possible to be that last week of September there as well. We'll have to wait and see on that. But Anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15 beta five. That is how it's been running for me on my iPhone 12 Pro and my 12 Pro Max here, as well as my iPad Pro. I didn't really mention the iPad as much, but it's been running fine over there. But let me know what you guys think about this video. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. And let me know in a comment down below how this version has been running for you. And if you're expecting a beta six next week. I hope we do. I really hope we do because Apple still has a few things to work out, but it's looking really good right now. And I can't wait for these new betas to get released. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.